Um, the, um, this is my introduction to my um, the master thesis. Uh, so it's it's a very impressive cover, <laughs> if I say so myself. So who am I? Uh, people don't know me. My actual full name is Ifat Selatzhayek. None of you can say it. Maybe Sua can. Um, <laughs> but most people just uh, use Ifat Shaik because it's slightly easier to pronounce. You did a very good job, Cecily. <laughs> I'm used to. Uh, um, so, my history with computer games is kind of weird. I started doing, uh, playing computer games when I was six. Uh, I was uh, studying, I was living in um, southern Israel, but I was doing, uh, I was going to school in, um, in a kibbutz next to it. And there was some computers there. Um, it, was, it was basically DOS with, you know, uh, and uh, there was mostly like studying stuff, but one of the computer has the prince at the Prince of Persia, and I managed one day to kick the boys out and play with it. <laughs> I was really bad, but uh, and then I moved to Jerusalem around nine, and I had a friend who had was the only person I knew who had a computer. Uh, I had a computer, but it was Mac, so I couldn't do anything with it. Um, uh, it was very, it was much nicer display, but I couldn't do much with it. And then uh, my friend Dasi uh, introduced me all the, if anyone remember the, the quest, the quest games that were all like filmed. Um, I won't tell you my age, so, but I'm, I'm like. <laughs> uh, but then Dasi moved to another uh, place that was kind of far, and I stopped playing computer games because I didn't have any games. Uh, and of course, in um, Israel, everything at that time everything kind of came later. So even like reading fantasy books and doing geeky stuff was really hard. I remember I had to go to northern Israel to buy like cubes for uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. It was really <laughs> bad. Uh, so. Um, like a life continued. Uh, I uh, eventually got into art school and I studied animation. And after I finished studying, I decided I'm never going to touch and do animation again. <laughs> I've done it a few times, to be realistic, but uh, it's not one of my greatest passions. Uh, and so at the meantime, I worked as an illustrator, graphic designer, compositor, anything that uh, and if there's spelling mistakes, I'm sorry. Um, and everything that uh, pay the bills. Um, and then in 2007, a very good friend of mine uh, was very nasty and gave me World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and that was very bad because I was in the last year of art school. <laughs> I finished art school with a very low grade, but I really got into World of Warcraft. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I started with World of Warcraft and moved on to other games, um, but I, I started to uh, get like a passion for, for gaming, but I never thought of making them. Um, a few years passed and I was working in Israel as a graphic designer in a big newspaper and I was feeling like I'm going nowhere. Um, and I said, okay, so I want to get out of here anyway. And there's no master degrees in art fields in Israel. Uh, and so maybe I should try and do a master somewhere. Uh, and I looked around and there was a few really nice masters that had gaming in them. And I was like, hmm. So I applied to a few places, most of them I didn't get accepted, but I was accepted to OCAD, where I am now. Um, and it says nothing about OCAD, there just was nicer. <laughs> they were just nice enough to accept me. Um, and, and I've been there and I'm almost done. Uh, so, uh, so what is my thesis? And I will talk a little bit about the theory because um, 
it's a master thesis and you have to deal with that. Um, so uh, I started with the whole thing, I'm going to do a game about war <laughs> and like really heavy stuff and, and like very serious and I was doing and I had this paper like this board game that was like a prototype and it was boring. <laughs> it just wasn't working. So I sat with my uh, advisor, uh, this is advisor and I'm like it's not working so he, he suggested I look up game theory, the economic one, not the gaming one and specifically social dilemmas and I read about it and I encountered the prisoner dilemma or oh, he gave me also the name prisoner dilemma, I can't remember exactly but um, and so the thesis was starting to shape up as translating social dilemmas, specifically translating the prisoner dilemma into a computer game form. Uh, I believe it was done in the past but it's my uh, little thing so um, so just a, a quick explanation about the prison dilemma. It's a social uh, dilemma that basically says uh, you both were arrested in a bank robbery or something. You're put in separate rooms and you were given a choice. If you, if you confess and betray, and betray your friend, you will get out free and your friend will get the full sentence. If you remain silent and your friend remains silent, you get a minimum sentence. If you both confess, you get an extra sentence. So basically what it says is if you betray your friend, you get the best, uh, you get out free, but you run the risk of your friend also betraying you and you both get um, sent to a large, uh, to full um, prison sentence. But if you cooperate and you both don't confess, you get a much lower sentence. Now the <laughs> dilemma, what happens is like, you know, all the rational game theory people who do numbers say, well, it's obvious that people will defect. Well, it turns out people don't defect. They most likely will cooperate with each other. Uh, even if it does mean they will get some sentence, they'll just get a smaller one. Um, which is a nice thing to say about human nature. Uh, by the way, economy students will betray you. <laughs> um, just so you know, I've just read a paper on it. It was fascinating. Uh, so, uh, next up was to translate this concept into a game. So, it came out this sort of um, concept of having a three screen game. Two of the screens, or uh, it might be even more eventually, uh, is, is a competition between two players, uh, basically collecting something or, or something like that um, on, a, on a sphere. Uh, the, and the sphere rotates and you know when you were kids and there was like these barrels on the water and the faster, you, the more you run, the faster it goes. So the sphere rotates fa the faster you go. And you can control the, and you can make it slow down if, if you jump or something. And, but, and it's a nice little small competition, but you also can uh, influence in a third screen. And on the third screen, there's another sphere. Now the sphere goes smaller the more you collect. So, and the faster you collect. So, and if it gets too small, it just dies and you lose the game. So both of you. So the idea is that if you're playing this game, you both have to occasionally cooperate with each other in order not to lose the game completely. I added another, slowly added other uh, uh, stuff to it. Uh, one of the idea is the fact that uh, the whatever you're collecting, it's like small little orb stuff, uh, are uh, like increase the more you have, the faster you go, so you have more to collect, so your chances of winning the game are more, uh, are bigger. Uh, there's been, um, this one, there's a lot of like variations that will probably not be done for the finished thesis, but will probably be um, at one point implemented, which is like, 
Um, so one is like the, the one of them is the time game. So this is what I'm working on now. Uh, one is uh, there is a limit of how much they collect, and if someone collects one, uh, you cannot collect the orb. So you're kind of under extra pressure uh, to collect as fast as you can, while not getting the third sphere uh, deflated. Uh, and 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 they have to a third one is to have to keep an object in their um, whatever on their sphere that will not die, and for that they need the orbs. So you have this pressure, and if it dies, they lose. So they have the pressure of, of making sure they don't lose either way. Um, so progress. So this was the original concept that I did on my uh, notebook um, while thinking about how to make this boring war game kind of works. Uh, and I moved from that. And it wasn't really supposed to be a sphere, but I played with like real-time 3D shapes, and the sphere worked the best. I might try to do it on like a cube at one point, but I like the idea of of a sphere on, of like a barrel on the water, and uh, and I thought the sphere would be a great way to do it. But unfortunately, also I have to say, Unity hates sphere shapes, <laughs> and and it's a pain. But uh, and so I might have. Should have done the cube. Uh, uh, this is a, like a Maya thing. The, the third one is a Maya thing I did just to test um, the kind of mechanics, just animated them. Uh, it's on YouTube somewhere. Uh, it's it's like 20 seconds, but it, it looks, and it was also sort of a, a proof of concept of how it's going to look. Uh, this one is uh, still from one of from the first test I did the beginning of the month, which was sort of successful and sort of not like any of those tests. Uh, and next up, I have to change half of the design. So this is what I've been trying now, and that's why I discovered that you need to like spare shapes. Uh, if you, by the way, if you ever want to do terrain stuff on Unity, spheres don't work. Um, so I have to now model everything in Maya and put it in. Um, and that's it. So this is my website. It's mostly drawings, but occasionally I put like process and games and stuff like that. And my Twitter, which a lot of you already follow, but <laughs> oh, I follow you, and uh, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yes, Henry. So, this is your first project in Unity that you're, you're doing? Yeah. So well, I did a small one like a few weeks ago, but yeah. Uh, in terms of your experience of getting in here, it's, it has it been, what, what, what has helped make it easier for you or like, and more accessible? Is it, uh, you know, tutorials? Is it like working with assets that exist and modifying them, talking to people? Well, I've been super lucky that I know Maya. Because the whole Unity infrastructure, in, uh, except for the codes, obviously, is, is very similar to Maya. So making the switch was really easy for me. Uh, I would say someone who doesn't, never done Maya stuff, or, or 3D in general, but it's very specific Maya, uh, or Blender also, um, will have a lot of troubles. Uh, another thing is that Unity has a shit ton of documentation online. <laughs> it helps. Andrew is looking, no, no, because yesterday, like, two days ago, he helped me. Well, <laughs> uh, there's, some of it, there's a lot of documentation online, at least for me. Uh, for the simple stuff, it it's really works. You get to a point where it's too complicated and you don't know how to code and you have to bother people uh, <laughs> about it. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, basically just like, online stuff and a bit of the assets in the asset store. Like I got Playmaker when it was on sale, uh, but it has a lot of annoying stuff and no documentation whatsoever. Playmaker is like a node-based coding thing for Unity. Yeah, anything? Thank you.